Welcome. My name is Dr. Munir Somji. Today, for this webinar, we're going to be presenting a new paradigm that will change body sculpting and fat loss forever. Like I said, my name is Dr. Munir Somji. I'm the founder of Dr. Medi Spa Clinics. Um, we've won various awards over the years, as uh, most uh, established clinics have. Um, my main specialty is a mix of surgical and non-surgical aesthetics, also combining laser techniques, um, looking at everything that's new um, and bringing it um, into the UK market. So I'm going to talk to you about um, my experience with Econia lasers, with Emerald Laser in specific. I was one of the first to bring the Emerald Laser into my practice. So I guess um, I'm qualified to speak about it, having had it in at Dr. Many Spa Clinics for two years now. So um, it's a great time to reflect. And also, we've had enough time for feedback from patients. And it's really changed the way that I think about not only fat loss, but just aesthetic med medicine in general. And I'm going to be presenting to you my new ethos uh, when treating patients. So we're going to review the current fat reduction technology. Um, and in my case, the historic fat reduction technology. And we're going to try and make that history and look for the new frontier um, we're always doing uh, essentially more, not only webinars, but also in-person talks, uh, upcoming conferences. We are also going to be continuing this theme. Um, and obviously, you've got an opportunity to ask questions at the end, which uh, you can ask me today or even when you see me in person, you can ask me as well. We're going to look at why Emerald Laser is the future. Uh, we're going to look at specific science behind green laser technology as well as looking at clinical evidence, which is extremely important when you're bringing devices into your practice. A lot of people are buying new devices in the UK. This has mainly been fueled by um, certain tax breaks and things that you can get and also demand from patients. And that's really, really important. So today we're gonna to be talking about how possibly you can educate your patients on why, even though they've come in for fat reduction, why that's not simply just the issue. So this is not standard fat loss. This is a cornea fat loss, body sculpting and cellulite. So the machine, the Emerald Laser machine is FDA approved for fat reduction. So circumferential fat reduction, but also for cellulite as well. The energy source is a non-thermal, 532 nanometer low level laser by electromagnetic energy transfer. So let's take a step back. What is, excuse me, what is the current global state of health? So, cardiovascular disease is the world's largest leading cause of death, so 32% of global mortality. Global spending on health has more than doubled in a 20-year period, reaching 9.8 of global GDP. That's massive. Obesity statistics show that 13% of global population is now clinically obese as of, as of 2016 when that study was taken. So we're living longer, but we're also living with disease. So that basically means that the need for wellness, the need to look after yourself has increased and the demand has increased for that. So it's no longer that you're seeing things like wellness clinics popping up, um, you know, how to better yourself, especially on uh, social media. Um, people are already starting these processes. We and now let, let's look at it specifically with obesity. It's tripled since 1975. So more than 1 billion people are obese. Um, crucially, yes, most of them are made up of adults, but a large proportion are adolescents and, and children. So obesity is, is preventable. There are some genetic factors to uh, certain cohorts, but the large majority of it is preventable. So just take it back to one of the first slides. The emerald laser, I said, was FDA approved for fat reduction. But there's an addition to that. It's FDA approved for fat reduction for 
for obese patients as well. So for BMI up to 40. So we've just talked about this new market, this new indication of patients that you were not able to previously treat within your practice. Before a patient would come in and we say, you're obese. We can't do this body shaping. We can't do fat freezing. You're obese, sorry. And as a clinician, that used to kind of kill me inside because actually, you know, I want to treat disease. I don't want to treat shapes and lines and wrinkles. I want to go back to being a physician. We want to treat patients to get a benefit in terms of not only their psychological benefit, but also, like I said, treat disease. That's your, as a clinician, that is your role. Yes, I think we've gone probably too far removed where we're seeing a lot when and I've been guilty of saying, well, yes, I'm I'm an artist, I'm not a I'm not this. And no, actually, at the end of the day, you're a physician, you're treating disease. If somebody comes in and they want liposuction and they're not obese, fair enough, maybe you can do it. But if someone's obese and you turn them away, you've actually turned the patient that actually really needs it most away. So this is what initially attracted me to the emerald laser because I said, hey, I can now treat obese patients and they are patients that can come to the clinic and be making real change in not only their, their general life, but also their physical attributes as well, um, which are intertwined. So could non-thermal laser be the answer? And why? Well, non-thermal laser has got a long history of benefits and we know the mechanism of action. We know that it's non-invasive. So there's no heat given to the skin. So no chance of burns or any other side effects. Zero downtime, no pain, and a short treatment time. So if we look specifically at the emerald laser for treatment of the abdomen, you can treat an abdomen circumferentially, so 360 in 30 minutes. Pain relieving properties. A lot of patients that have had the emerald laser have noticed that their back pain's improved. Decreased swelling, improved blood flow. These are all things that low level laser is known for. We're gonna to touch on the next one, which is enhances energy production. So we're gonna go delve into how treatment of low level laser can upregulate ATP. And in certain studies, four times as much ATP is uh, when you're at rest. We've already talked about how it's FDA approved for cellulite and fat reduction, but there are many other wellness benefits that are associated with low level laser. So we know it's anti-inflammatory. We know it's great for the immune system. And also it decreases stress. So this is something that's going to give your patients a true holistic treatment. So this is a very important slide um, for many reasons. Well, firstly, we need to get you to think about non-thermal lasers versus thermal lasers. So thermal lasers obviously release heat. And whenever we buy new laser within the practice, we're like, how can we get more power? How can we become more ablative? We need to just scrap that from our thinking because with non-thermal laser, it's not about power. So there's only a certain amount of, uh, let's say, photonic energy that you're your cells can absorb. And actually the way that um, non-thermal laser works is that initial photonic energy absorption. And then beyond that, the positive effects that you get are almost like a cascade. So using the cell communication between different cells, and that's where you get your depth and that's where you get your complete treatment. So, like we said, it's an energy, not power. So energy transfers power heats. Increasing power does not change the ele uh, electronic voltage. The minimum energy to induce direct photochemistry is 1.7. So we know when we're sitting at that 532 nanometer, we, that's all we need to do. And why are these slides so crucial? 
while the emerald laser already does that so it already hits that point so there's no such thing as an emerald laser v2 max or an en uh, emerald laser neo or whatever you want to call it it's just going to be the emerald laser there's no other machine that you feel like once you've made that investment you're not going to need really another machine apart from the emerald laser so it can't get better this is an existing technology that's been crafted it's been optimized and it can't get better and actually if you're looking from a financial viewpoint that is massive because we get into this rut where we keep thinking that we need to buy machine on machine and then when you speak to your accountant your accountant is saying well hold on a minute you're depreciating this machine over five to ten years but you're buying a new machine every two years but yes so i think from a business point of view and i think that it's always worth looking at this um again this is what attracted me to the emerald laser and that's the first question i asked when's the next machine coming up and a lot of the times a lot of the salesmen say yes we're really looking forward to the next machine and i never buy it then i wait for the next machine to come but with emerald laser you're not going to have that issue so non-thermal lasers concentrated light that delivers highly energetic photons of energy into the cell optimizing overall cellular function the primary effect of non-thermal laser is to affect cytochrome C oxidase activity. So for those of you that are not um, familiar with cytochrome C oxidase, it's the final enzy enzyme in the electronic, uh, electron transport chain. So it plays an essential role in cellular respiration and ATP production. So with low level laser, it uses low la intensity lasers to stimulate cellular activity, promoting tissue healing. When these lasers are applied to the skin, they can penetrate into the mitochondria of the cells and activate cytochrome C oxidase, which is one, which is at, like we mentioned, is one of the key enzymes in ATP productions. So several studies have shown that low level laser can have a direct effect on cytochrome C oxidase by promoting the delivery of oxygen to mitochondria and facilitating the transfer of electrons through the electron transplant chain. So when C cytochrome C acti uh, oxidase activity is enhanced, the electron transplant uh, transport chain leads to an upregulation of ATP. So furthermore, low level laser can help to upregulate the expression of cytochrome C oxidase by increasing the transcription and translation of the gene that codes for cytochrome C oxidase. So this, the stimulation of the expression leads to an increase in activity and then again, an increase in ATP production. So we know this from various studies, the increase in production of ATP can give several benefits. So you've got in better tissue healing, reduced pain, improved cellular function, and crucially, can dampen inflammation. So most of this wellness that we see nowadays, everything is there to reduce inflammation. You've got gut bacteria, you know, we're used, taking things like kombucha and things for our gut health to reduce the inflammation. You're not eating inflammatory foods, you're reducing that inflammation as well. So this is all ties in and it will actually be um, quite uh, appealing to patients that are already on the wellness track. So we know that chronic pain and non-thermal laser has had multiple studies and approval for pain relief and Econia parent company uh, of uh, Emerald Laser has a history within pain. And so they're very used to controlling, well, making controlled trials with non-biased elements for pain. So we've known for years that low-level laser is fantastic for pain of many different types. And we see it as a positive side effect of the treatments that we offer at the clinic. More than that, we look, there's numerous studies looking at the positive effect of low level, low level laser therapy um, for neurodevelopmental and uh, mental health disorders. 
So, you know, and that can be from like autistic spectrum disorder all the way through to even uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as depression as well. So again, you know, if somebody comes to your clinic and is overweight, you have to look at everything in within their lifestyle. They may be suffering from low mood. They may be suffering from low energy. And with the use of Emerald Laser, as well as adjunctive devices that Aconia um, supply, uh, such as red and also violet light with a, um, a machine called the EVRL, which I encourage if you're looking to purchase the Emerald Laser to add that on, you can actually do uh, a dual treatment where obviously the patient's having Emerald Laser has fat reduction as well as all of the homeostatic benefits that they have. But you can also at the same time stimulate the brain. And that will improve with that will improve their focus, their concentration. Um, you can also help with the vagus nerve, which is coming up within uh, this presentation. So let's look at the vagus nerve. So it provides an extensive afferent and efferent network of innovation for the viscera. We know that it plays a key role as the interface between higher central nervous system circuits and the autonom autonomic control circuitry of the brain. So it's about 80% sensory afferent and 20% motor. We don't fully understand uh, the whole process of the vagus nerve, but with low-level laser, there is research that has shown that low-level laser can help stimulate the vagus nerve which can lead to several beneficial effects. The vagus nerve, like we mentioned, is, has both sensory and motor neurons, which allow it to transmit information signals from various uh, organs in the body. So when the vagus nerve is stimulated by low-level laser, it can help to A, reduce inflammation. So the vagus nerve helps regulate the body's immune response. And by stimulating that nerve, it can help reduce inflammation and promote tissue healing. Number two, it improves cardiovascular function. So the vagus nerves help regulate the heart rate, the blood pressure. And by stimulating that nerve with low-level laser, you can improve cardiovascular function. And the third, which I do on a daily basis with, with my EVRL, is to enhance digestion. So the vagus nerve plays a critical role in regulating digestion. And by stimulating that nerve with low-level laser, it can help to increase uh, gastric motility and also improve digestion as well. Now, a lot of these clinical studies show that depending on, it doesn't actually truly matter which wavelength you use to stimulate these uh, um, nerves, because as we looked at in a previous slide, a certain amount of photonic energy that needs to be absorbed for the change to happen. So you can even put the emerald laser over that area quite safely, and you can also exhibit the same effect. But the reason why I have the other devices, the EVRL in the clinics, is that it saves time, and time is very, very important. So like we said, several mechanisms have been identified, the anti-inflammatory route, the cholinergic anti-inflammatory pathway as well, as well as the splenic sympathetic anti-inflammatory pathway. So what is Emerald? I've alluded to it. I've probably told you a lot about it. It's a non-invasive laser that emits 10 532 green lasers onto the screen to treat hypertrophic uh, fat cells. It does not destroy the fat cell. So fat is an important organ within our body. We should be preserving it because it is imperative for optimal homeostatic function. So it needs to be there. So why are we destroying it? So from there, the treatment emulsifies the adipose tissue intracellular, intracellularly. And then from there, the fat is then passed through the body during its natural course of detoxification through the lymphatic system. So like we've mentioned, there's a plethora of well-being benefits from the device as well. So we've already talked about the prevalence of obesity. It's very encouraging that this is FDA approved for uh, patients with a BMI of up to 40. And 
like I said, within if I urge you to read the stu- read the studies on the Oconian website because you can see how those studies have been constructed. There was in some studies there's two arms, one which is the placebo arm and one is the treatment arm. Interestingly, the placebo arm was with LED for some of the studies. So that's how confident they are in their technology. And more than that, for fat reduction, the patients were told not to change their diet and not to change their exercise levels, even if they were quite sedentary. I think that's quite profound when you think about it. So following on from that, Laconia as a corporation has had 20 FDA market clearances. The first low-level laser to receive FDA approval for clearance for neck and shoulder pain. And they also created a new category for the FDA called the Oli Fat Reduction Laser, making Econia the gold standard for low-level laser technology. So you can't get any better than that. Let's review current um, fat reduction devices. You've got cryolipolysis with their outcome is apoptosis, heat. No matter how you do it, high food, radio frequency, laser, apoptosis. So why is low-level laser different? Well, actually, it preserves the fat cell. It gets to the fat by creating a transitory pore within the bilipid membrane. And from there, the fat is emulsified, and then it removed into the systemic circulation. And then if you look at histological slides, after about three or four hours, that lipid membrane has come back again. So this is the way that you need to really be educating your patients. If you are overweight, your fat cells are enlarged. As a result of that, you get more pro-inflammatory cytokines, decrease in anti-inflammatory cytokines, and then you get the opposite in terms of uh, that that plethora of benefits that you can get from the emerald laser. So you get altered immune response. You might get increased blood pressure, vascular dysfunction, impaired angiogenesis. So anything this patient does at your practice is they're overweight. And most of the treatments that you might do energy-based wise are even on the face are collagen stimulatory. They're not going to get as good a result. So there's an argument to say that if you are overweight, before you start any real treatments, maybe you should be actually having the emerald laser because that's actually helping but that will help you with other treatments. So it can even be used as an adjunct prior to any treatments. Now, if you've got a fat cell that's big and sluggish, generally things that are big and sluggish are slow. They're inefficient. And suddenly, if you've got a leaner, meaner fat cell, it can actually do things a lot more efficiently. And subsequently, they will become more efficient human beings. So we know that with cryolipolysis, you can get decent results um, for reduction. It can be seen in as early as about four weeks. But the elephant in the room with the cryolipolysis is paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. So getting fat after a period of time. Now, and getting more fat in different areas, areas where you never really had any fat. And that's very stubborn fibrous fat. It's very difficult to remove with liposuction. Yes, it's a very low in terms of the incidence, but this is not just restricted to cryolipolysis, this side effect. This is restricted to anything that causes lipolysis. So the only one is the one that preserves the fat cell, which is low-level laser and emerald laser. So we've talked about paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. Linda Evangelista has obviously made this very, very popular. Um, Suddenly a model that may be not so relevant has become relevant. But either way, she's um, brought about a change within the industry. Um, And we're seeing a domino effect um, with, uh, with things. And remember what I said at the beginning. We have to remember that we are clinicians. We should do no harm. There's enough evidence here now that there are other technologies such as low-level laser that can replace non-surgical fat reduction treatments such as cryolipolysis, radio frequency, high-intensity ultrasound. It is your Hippocratic oath, if you're a doctor, to 
ensure that you actually tell patients what the current technology is, what is the harm that can happen. Um, so I don't use cryolipolysis in my practice anymore. Those machines are gathering dust um, because you have to move with the times. And if new evidence comes out and you you realize that you really can't ignore it, um, and that's not good practice. I have one of these machines, which is a muscle stimulation device, an M-Scott Mio. And I think it works very, very well with emerald laser because obviously emerald laser is working in the fat, it's working in the well-being, it's doing a lot of things. <laughs> but one thing that it can't stimulate is muscle. So maybe a diastasis recti, it can't stimulate muscle bulk. It might help the process of the M-Scott Mio and definitely combined is fantastic. But the first device you really get is an emerald laser because it's the fat that people care about. And then once you've got a good patient base, then you can look to invest in one of these. So like we said, most procedures kill those fat cells, but we want to really preserve it. So we're trying to change it. So it's a new paradigm shift going back to our title. One of the earliest studies that I read was Dr. Nira. Um, who looked at the structural integrity of the fat cell when conducting, conducting a study looking at reduction in pain from low-level lasers post liposuction. And what he found was really interesting. He found that only after about four minutes of laser exposure, there was 80% disruption of the adipose membrane, and the fat was just leaking into the interstitial space. And you see that sometimes even at pre-op when we're doing a little bit of submental liposuction. I exposed the area to um, 30 minutes of emerald laser and my extraction scores, my liposuction aspirate scores are so much more higher and it's a lot easier to do. Um, so, and after six minutes of laser exposure, there's almost 100% of the fat within the interstitial, interstitial space. So this is how it was first found, that sort of link that we looked at. Um, and crucially, the membrane is only temporary, temporarily disrupted. So it creates that transitory pore within the main brain and it allows the fat to liquefy. So step by step, fat leaves the cell, enters the extracellular space, triglycerides are then absorbed by the lymphatic system, transported via afferent lymph vessels to lymph nodes, broken down by your macrophages and then transported to the circulatory system and also processed by the liver and bowels. So you can't have a treatment every day. Um, we know that the maximum that we do in our practice is two treatments a week. Um, we would look at their liver function if we're doing two treatments a week. 99.9% .9 of patients are safe just to have one treatment a week. If you want an accelerated course, yes, you can do two a week, but I just recommend just to check their liver function prior to that. And there you can see the disruption of the membrane on the left after exposure. So again, um, studies from Dr. John Wolasek and in vitro testing showing that the fat is emulsified and also leaving the cell. So we know that this is likely to be a mechanism of action. It's really important um, that this process doesn't induce adipose death. Um, and what is really important is that those particular cells remain viable after the release of lipid content. Otherwise, then it's the same as fat freezing, we've got the same issue. Now, what is really important that all of the studies for this device in particular are double-blinded, placebo-controlled, randomized, multi-centered studies. So well-constructed studies that you can actually trust. And this was probably my favorite one because the patients had two treatments a week for three weeks with the emerald laser, BMI of 30 and under no change in the diet and exercises. And they had a mean um, median loss of 4.5 inches. And that's actually pretty much what you see in practice, to be honest. And this is what I tell, tell patients. So after about six treatments, um, this is what you see. How much is that actually? Well, actual fat loss, four inches, that's quite a bit. That's 2.7 liters of fat with surgical liposuction. That's an average of what you would be doing. And um, some uh, some surgeons up to a thousand, uh, thousand milliliters 
um, would do that um, awake under sedation. Um, so this is something that's quite comparative to um, a general uh, general anesthetic liposuction procedure. This is the crucial study looking at 30 to 40 BMI, um, and obviously based on these results, uh, it gained FDA approval the only device that's got approval for obese patients, which I think is uh, fantastic. You can do it on different areas. So arms is a very popular one, uh, as well as legs. And obviously with legs, you get the double benefit that you'll get an improvement within cellulite as well. So it can be used over many different areas, obviously because of uh, regulations in FDA um, and we'll later plant advertising and see different areas. We've done it for patients with gynecomastia, which I'm happy to share uh, images for you with, with you guys. So we've done it for many different indications. These are all the patients uh, within that study looking at the actual amount of fat loss. What you can see when you look at studies normally is that um, you might see some non-responders uh, within the study, but if you cast your eyes to the right where it says total inch loss, everyone has had some result, which I think is uh, really, really powerful looking at this data specifically. So, like we said, rather than destroying the fat cell, let's preserve it. You've got important biological functions, energy balance, improvement in insulin sensitivity, blood coagulation, glucose metabolism, also helping with feeding behavior because we don't tell patients to change their diet. We say, look, the study says don't change the diet. Start the emerald laser, get more energy, help with your uh, vagus nerve, which we stimulate as well. And then we look at their diet and refine it. So we want a patient to get a profound result beyond what they're seeing us uh, from the time period they're seeing us within the clinic. And obviously, you've got multiple other plethora of wellness benefits that patients can see. So how do we facilitate wellness? Well, we should be starting with wellness now because that's a disease that we need to see. So if you're not living well, it's a disease. So we really want to empower lifestyle changes. So, you know, you need to only take it one step at a time. It's too much of a concept to tell patients uh, within 20, 30 minutes. Even from what I've said today, I encourage you to turn up to some of the other talks and look at some of the other talks that uh, the other KOLs within Konya have talked about because we all have a different opinion on things. And it's uh, your, your idea of wellness might be a little bit different from mine. Um, but we know that there's clinical evidence to show that this works. We've got improvement in electron transport, as we mentioned, resulting in an upregulation of ATP. The immunity will, will, uh, will increase and, you, and a better uh, uh, cellular response. So what I always say is, look, let's start, see the benefit within two or three sessions. Then we optimize your diet. And then we look at your lifestyle and everything falls into place from there. So emerald laser comes from a corneal staples. And like I said, one of the main thing is, is that emerald laser is a device that has full FDA clearance for what it's advertised for. There are many devices that we purchase that are marketed as, say, non-surgical facelifting devices, collagen generating devices. But actually, the FDA approval most of the time is liposuction or, F, uh, or radio frequency assisted liposuction. It, it's not actually approved for what we're actually buying it for. So this is quite nice because actually the device is approved for fat reduction. It's also approved for cellulite. But we also know there's a solid data bank of evidence that there are multiple other benefits for it. And that's a nice surprise <laughs> rather than the other surprise that you can get um, when you're having, when you're owning your own practice or you're working within a practice. So emerald laser is non-invasive, pain-free, no bruising, no swelling, no redness, no pain, no downtime. And prevention of apoptosis is exactly what you need. So look, what's the summary? The summary is is that we are all clinicians here that are treating patients. We don't call them clients, we call them patients. Whenever I have anybody that says, how do you treat your clients? But I hate the word clients because we are treating patients. 
If we're treating patients, we're treating disease. So it's about time that we don't treat the end point of disease and we treat the cause. You can do this with obesity, where the device is approved for obese patients. And here we are. We've got the Emerald Laser. So thank you so much for your time. We're going to take some questions now. There's been a lot of questions um, that are popping up into the screen. And I'm going to hand over. Great guys, so we're gonna go through some questions. But first of all, we're gonna have a look at the polls. So um, when we've had a look at the first question within the polls, it says, do you ever have to turn away patients of a certain size? And 50% said yes. And I think that's really powerful because if you're turning away 50% of patients, you're doing a disservice to your patients. So the emerald laser where it's approved for obese patients, you're treating the patients which need it most. So that's very unsurprising. And this is the reason why the emerald laser really does fill a gap um, in the market. The top problem for patients uh, was either the stubborn fat, fat pockets, bloating or cellulite. So stubborn fat pockets, 83%. So um, actually that's quite surprising because I would have thought actually cellulite would be quite uh, popular. Certainly in my clinics it's quite popular. Um, but stubborn fat pockets is uh, where it is. And obviously emerald laser is great for circumferential fat reduction, which is fantastic. Next poll that we did was looking at the negative side effects of laser devices that we currently use. Um, so pain was responsible for 50% of this. And that's, uh, again, really quite high. So, you know, this would also affect patient compliance, whether they're able to even complete a course of treatment. And also, if you're using a laser device that's uh, not delivering a set amount of energy, like if you're using radio frequency over the body, you might have whoever's delivering the treatment, such as therapists or nurses, not delivering the amount of energy that's uh, going to give you that required effect. So with Emerald Laser, there's no pain involved. Um, it's a very simple to use device um, that just needs to be positioned correctly and then you just t turn on the button. So, and I think that's really important that I've seen within, uh, within the clinics um, is that actually devices that are easy to use for staff members, they tend to recommend it within consultations a lot easier than if they obviously they have to do a lot of work with it. In the traditional radio frequency devices that we've had previously for fat reduction, there's been variances in the treating clinicians in terms of their protocols as well as the effects that you get. And that can also be quite tricky for pa more patient satisfaction. So if you've got a treatment that's quite standardized and hard to perform incorrectly, then that's very, very useful. So, um, you know, I think it's... Uh, quite interesting looking at those polls. We're going to have a look at some of the questions. So the first question that we, uh, the latest question that we have is, would you be able to measure an increase in ketones in the body um, from released fat? So obviously um, that question, I think that, uh, let's have a look at that. Uh, oops. So Sorry, one second. Right, so I think that would be very difficult to measure that because it'd be quite time dependent in terms of the ketones that you're measuring from um, the fact that it's obviously been broken down. Um, but I think the, the key point in this is that um, you do a maximum of two sessions. Um, you do a maximum of two sessions in one week. 
Um, I think that's really, um, really important uh, that you wouldn't go over that. I do, if patients want more accelerated at twice weekly than the normal once weekly program, then we do perform liver function tests um, just to make sure as well as cholesterol tests. Um, I don't think that measuring ketones, unless obviously um, <clears throat> someone is obviously diabetic, then would be an issue. So um, and I don't think that you're circulating uh, as a result of lipolysis, your circulating ketones are going to be high or detrimental. So uh, in terms of if your asked question was a safety concern, and I don't think that um, that is an issue. Um, so let's have a look. So in what mechanism obviously stimulates the vagus nerve? This is obviously what um, uh, we uh, covered within the talk, uh, looking at the vagus nerve and also um, looking at uh, the activation of cytochrome C oxidase uh, within the cells. And also, it auto-regulates the vagus nerve. So we looked, there were some studies that look at um, inappropriate firing of the vagus nerve and low-level laser therapy, and how this obviously um, stops any um, negative feedback um, from uh, the vagus nerve not firing accordingly as it should do. Um, I'm more than happy to send my slides um, to anybody that's interested as well as any um, links to any studies um, looking at this uh, specifically. So, let's have a look. So, the next question is, is it enough to have just laser or should it be followed by lymphatic massage? I think that's a very good question. Um, when we first got the device a couple of years ago, we only um, performed the emerald laser treatment and we still did get results. So all of those clinical studies that you saw um, were, did not have any lymphatic massage afterwards. But after I went to um, one clinical meeting, a worldwide meeting with Econia Lasers, and spoken to some clinicians that had used previous um, had used the device previously uh, and for a lot longer. Most of them noted increased clinical benefits and quicker benefits performing the lymphatic uh, drainage massage afterwards. So we incorporated the body balancer suit um, that comes with uh, the, the emerald laser device. You can request this to come with your machine. Um, and it's very easy to use. The patient just puts it on um, almost like a set of trousers and it performs the lymphatic drainage quite quickly and efficiently. So now it's part of all of our protocols. I think it's very difficult to tell from the sample set uh, from my own clinical, um, my own clinics, because obviously when we first started a treatment, when you're starting a treatment, you're almost learning about it and you'll always have some individuals that maybe weren't treated with the correct protocol. And then when we introduced the body the balancer suits, obviously the protocols became more standardized and the results became more effective and standardized. So whether that was down to just having an initial treatment um, and getting used to it, I can't really tell. But um, I think in terms of expert opinion uh, from echoconia lasers, it's a good idea to do the lymphatic drainage afterwards. And we noticed that patients obviously see quicker results um, when you're combining the two afterwards. And the total treatment time would probably be about, an, uh, you, in terms of diaries, probably you book out an hour for that. Um, so uh, the other question that we had was, how long do you use the body balance of post emerald? Is 20 minutes enough? Um, we do it for like 30 minutes. Um, so it's an hour appointment. So 20 minutes is what this on one of the modes on, on the body balance of suit. So the hour um, length of the, um, the hour length of the appointment um, is, is enough for patients. Um, so if the fat goes to the lymphatic system and is not used by the body, will it go back to the fat cells after 72 hours? Um, so actually what we didn't really show during uh, some of the histology um, is some of the slides that happen afterwards. 
Um, and this is uh, very, very similar to even uh, a lot of the recent research looking at fat transfer uh, with energy-based devices and how they disrupt the cell membrane. And this obviously acts in, helps with the release of cytokines and beneficial um, for when you're transplanting fat um, and doing fat transfer uh, for a fat uptake. And actually, when you look at after they're disrupted, the cells do recover. Um, so this is another reason why it's important to do uh, the body balancer afterwards. Now, uh, just noting that obviously everything that goes into the lymphatics is not used obviously as energy. Obviously, it's been metabolized by the liver and depending on your metabolism, um, different things happen to different proportions of those fat cells. But I think it's really important that when obviously you're looking at the mechanism, you don't only think about fat as a reduction. You also must think about ATP um, and the charging of ATP that happens is four times what you have normal. And if you charge ATP, then obviously your metabolism will improve. And if your metabolism improves, even your uptake of fat will reduce. So these are things that are uh, happening as a result of having had an emerald laser treatment. So yes, you are obviously causing some intracellular um, lipolysis and retaining that fat cell. But at the same time, yes, you will get that energy um, from, systemic, um, from, from systemic fat the energy you're actually getting is because of the ATP so, um, so so just to make that clear from the talk so uh, that, uh, right so darker skin types with non-thermal lasers do you need to take action torsion so like we said this is a non-thermal laser that basically means that obviously there's no heat that is given off to the skin. So this is safe on every single skin type, um, irrespective of the presence of melanin, uh, the amount of melanin present within the skin. Okay. How often do you ask clients to return if they have stubborn fat? So if patients have stubborn fat, this is probably the primary reason why they're there. With the emerald laser, you've got 10 532 nanometer um, laser beams. And that means that you can target uh, singular beams on different areas, especially uh, stubborn areas as well. So this is when we select one bean and we do it submentally, um, for example, in the submental region. Um, generally, the minimum course would be six sessions. Um, and for stubborn pockets of fat, it could be up to around 10 sessions. Now, you change that because obviously if you've got a patient that's um, got circumferential issues for around the abdomen, um, then, and they're obese, they may need more than 10 sessions. So there are some patients that have very high BMI uh, within my clinic, and they will book in for once a weekly treatment for a whole year. Um, and that obviously they uh, coupled with the lifestyle changes that they'll make uh, will result in obviously dramatic results. Do you ask your patients to go on a calorie deficit diet to optimize results? If so, is there anything you can recommend working diet my clients to use? Yes, I think that's a really good question. Like we focused on the on the on the randomized controlled trials that uh, Konya lasers have made and noted that uh, there was no change in diet in those patients and they just ate what they were prior to prior to the study. But obviously in reality, in practice, we should be promoting healthy living. And I think that there's a really useful, um, useful thing uh, that we use within the clinic. And we perform these DNA tests for nutrition. Um, the company is called Fagron. Um, and they, um, you do a DNA swap looking at an individual's nutrition. And based on your genetic analysis, it will give you um, an indication of what type of diet the patient should be uh, selecting based on their genetic code. So that might be a high fat, low calorie diet or, or, or vice versa, or high protein diet. It will also tell you the foods that you may be intolerant to may have a predisposition to be intolerant to. 
um, and it gives essentially a whole list of foodstuffs that you can buy in the supermarket that's appropriate for you as well as a breakdown of the percentage amount of fat uh, carbohydrates and proteins you should be looking at in your diet and it's quite common uh, when we do these things and we include this in the emerald uh, package uh, that we sell at the clinic uh, how many patients actually would only be a very low percentage responder to a low calorie diet um, and it also gives you indications of what type of exercises you should be doing, i.e. high-intensity diet, high-intensity workouts, whether they don't respond to that at all or they should be doing something a little bit more sedentary, like maybe just walking uh, for an hour a day. So, And that really helps patients think about their lifestyle because um, DNA doesn't change. And the fact that that study gives so many different foodstuffs, it's, we don't tell patients what not to eat, we tell them what to eat. And I think that's really, really useful. From an internet connection, hopefully you can hear me now. Um, so, um, the next question is what sort of research criteria should you be looking at when taking on new technology? So I think, again, you know, we've gone through this in the presentation at length. I definitely think that obviously the gold standard is always double blinded randomized controlled trials in multi centers. Um, now obviously Oconia delivered that with their Emerald laser as well as their many other devices. And I encourage you also to um, look at um, the different um, devices that they do have, especially with pain reduction. Um, and actually, yes, I don't think in the aesthetic market we should be asking for, for, for that level of study, but definitely something that obviously minimizes bias and large end numbers. And I think, um, you know, this is what I look for. Um, I think it's very rare. I think you'll, en you'll only end up buying an emerald laser if you stuck to double-blinded randomized control trials because it's not even there, even with the big players. Um, so I think, um, yeah, definitely looking specifically at the publication, looking at the indication is really important. Um, and also speaking to other people that actually have the device. And, um, you know, we've had a lot of... Um, uh, physicians in the last um, two years that have bought the emerald laser that have actually come to the clinic and actually um, had courses themselves to see how it felt and I actually um, did that uh, myself um, I traveled uh, to Europe, to one of the European clinics and actually had the emerald laser uh, treatment three sessions um, before I actually purchased the machine and I think that's really important so let's have a look at the final question. Typically with fat loss and lasers, depth of penetration is important. Can you tell us why this is not the case with emerald laser? So again, this is, um, we, we talked about uh, within the talk about uh, the need for uh, absorption of photonic energy. And that's uh, yeah, very important. So once that photonic energy has been absorbed, then no more power is required because what then gets instigated is a cell is is your cell communication so we know that all fat communicates this is the reason why we get paradoxical adipose hyperplasia when you're looking at emerald laser when you when you're uh, when you're exhibiting uh, photonic energy for example in the abdomen even though those cells have been acted upon yes you're going to get communication throughout the whole body, i.e. fat within the whole body. And it's the initiation and upregulation of cytochrome C oxidase that starts that chain. So um, it doesn't even matter about depth. And again, um, there are some ongoing studies looking specifically at visceral fat that haven't been published yet. But we know that from the science and the way that low-level laser works, that you're going to see a positive change on the amount of visceral fat. Okay, so so 
So um, just as a final note, uh, thank you so much for attending today. For all inquiries, um, Vanessa at Conia Lasers um, is your point of contact. Um, her email is inquiries at aconia-emea.com. And like I said, Vanessa is a UK and Ireland sales and operations manager. Um, I'm more than happy for any of you guys to reach out to me if you have any um, further clinical uh, questions or any clarification required or you need me to send any slides to you. Um, obviously, you can contact me even on uh, some of my social media pages or even via email as well um, through the Emerald team. Um, but thank you so much for attending the webinar and hopefully uh, see you at AM Live where um, myself, uh, Deb Patel and uh, Dr. Nima will be talking about our experiences. Um, we have three very different practices and we're going to be talking about experiences specifically with the Emerald Laser as well as the EVR, EVRL devices which are approved for multiple indications like I said um, with also pain reduction as well. Um, so I think uh, that's one not to miss at AM Live and hopefully see you all there.